What's up guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes and today we are going to design and 3D print this Viking, this Viking's helmet right here. Uh, so I've got a couple friends, um, two to be exact, uh, only two friends, um, and a, a father-in-law who are big Vikings fans. So um, I thought this would be a neat project to go ahead and design and 3D print and would make a great gift. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and tackle this. Oh, uh, I also ordered uh, this stuff right here. It's this epoxy that I've seen people use for uh, finishing and smoothing 3D prints. So I'm excited. I'm going to try this out. So I'm going to do two versions, one in just regular PLA, uh, no post-processing, and another one where I'm going to uh, apply this epoxy and just kind of play around with it. So, all right, let's get designing. I started with a sketch of a circle and took a quarter of it and revolved it to give me this dome. I then copied and pasted that dome giving me two separate bodies and scaled one up just a little bit. Uh, next I created this sketch which I extruded out to give me that outer strip, uh, made sure I went ahead and shelled it. Uh, then created another sketch uh, to create the bolt which I moved into place and then went ahead and created a circular pattern uh, around the Z and Y axis. Next, I scaled the helmet, uh, making sure to scale both bodies and choosing the non-uniform option to give me this uh, oval shape. Uh, then I imported a, um, a drawing, uh, which I just uh, googled a Viking helmet and, and found this drawing, and then just downloaded it and attached it as a canvas. Uh, then I went into the sculpting environment and used that drawing uh, to go ahead and create the horn. So as you can see here, I started with a cylinder and uh, within the edit form environment, uh, just added more and more faces and then uh, scaled it uh, into place uh, to try to match that shape as best as I can. Really great way to get used to using um, uh, the sculpting environment is just to kind of bring images in and start tracing them. So I do a little tweaking here and make sure to close off the top uh, and the bottom of the horn to give me a solid body. And then I went ahead and sketched uh, a circle to create uh, this uh, sort of hockey puck. Um, looking thing that I went ahead and attached to the horn and then created a mirror of the horn uh, so that I have uh, one on each side and then just a uh, little more tweaking here to scale it and getting it the right size. As you can see I also applied some uh, paint uh, to my drawing to be able to get uh, my colors there. Next I sent it to the printer and printed this in sections due to the size of my build plate. Here are all the models printed out. Then it was time to apply the epoxy. Uh, I'm working here under a vented hood and as you can see I mixed both parts of the epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio and then mixed it and went ahead and applied it just using a paintbrush. Um, I just layered this on. This stuff was really thick uh, and uh, but you can see once I got it all on it really gave it a, a nice smooth uh, very polished look. Then it was time to uh, attach the two pieces and I did that by creating these tabs uh, and uh, putting some glue on the edge and then really kind of snapping it uh, together to um, you know to get it to be able to hold and uh, stay in place. Then I uh, applied the epoxy to the other side and sanded it. Uh, next was the primer so I went ahead and and uh, primed it and uh, just got a good layer on there and let it dry and then applied the gold paint. Uh, this is just metallic gold paint that I picked up from Home Depot. Um, so it just got a nice, I put two coats on this one hour apart. Next I went ahead and painted the bolts into place. At first I was going to print these out separate and just uh, snap them into place but then I thought a, a simpler method would just be to print it as one piece and then paint them. So I've got my two sets of helmets here. Uh, this is the one where I first used the epoxy and then uh, primed it and spray painted it. So you see a much uh, a more glossy, uh, smooth finish. I did the same thing uh, with the horns. And on this side I have the helmet that I just printed in its respective colors in PLA. So I've got my gold helmet. Um, came out more of a bronze looking, but that's alright. 
and uh, purple, and then use white for the horns. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this guy first. In order to glue this together, I found that rubber bands really became my best friend here. I uh, just uh, attached these into place and then used some tape. I actually used gaffer's tape, but if I was to do it again, I would use masking tape. Um, it would be a lot easier to, to peel off. Um, let's take a moment to hear what I have to say at this part. All right, so now I'm applying glue to the horns and using the same process uh, with the tape to uh, hold it in place so that I can go ahead and then rubber band it. All right, you guys ready for the big reveal? Here is exhibit A and here is exhibit B. So on my right, as you can see, I have the all natural uh, PLA printed, uh, no real post processing going on here. On my left, we've got the epoxy coated, primed and spray painted version. Um, so I'm really happy with the way they both came out, uh, especially the one with the epoxy. Um, since it was my first time using it. Um, as far as the PLA, I'll briefly talk about one quick thing I learned, which is if you're not planning to paint it, then don't sand it. Because uh, I tried sanding it just to smooth out a few areas, and all I really did was just kind of gave it a dull finish at those places. Um, I couldn't figure out a way to bring it back. I tried heating it you know, with a lighter and seeing if I can get that... Um, that shine back and I wasn't able to get that. So that's one lesson learned. As far as the epoxy, uh, really great stuff to work with. I mean, you look at this, you can't tell that this was 3D printed. Uh, really gives it a whole, you know, really nice finish. It kind of takes your prints to a different level. Um, it was a lot thicker than I anticipated. Um, so getting a nice even coverage, I think is gonna take uh, a little bit of practice, um, a little bit more working with it. Um, so as far as my first time, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm happy with the way it came out, but I did come up with some really interesting sort of patterns on the surface here um, and on the horns, which, you know, I mean, these were Vikings, right? They weren't going around with uh, flawless helmets. I mean, they were in battles all the time. So, um, so I'm fine with the look. And uh, I'm sure if you look at a rhino horn, it's not perfectly smooth. I'm sure it has some lumps in there. So... Um, so yeah, it's the look I was going for. So anyway, I'm happy with the way it came out. Um, really gonna enjoy working with this stuff in the future. And I, I've already actually placed an order for some other types of epoxies out there. I know that Smoothon makes one that's specifically for, uh, or they advertise it specifically for 3D printing for smoothing prints. So I'm gonna try their stuff and see some other stuff out there. So. All right, guys, uh, if you enjoyed this video, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are interested in learning how to design for 3D printing, check out my online tutorials. I'm going to put a link below, designing for 3D printing with Fusion 360. Oh, and I'm also going to throw these files on my Thingiverse page. You can find me there if you want to download and print your own. Uh, you can find me there as Desktop Makes. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. That actually fits. Nice. All right, see ya.